spicy stuff. If you're looking for the spicy stuff, it's in chapter 30 and 32. You're welcome. I need more answers. <laughs> I need more answers, okay? I need more. Because that's what I'm hearing in my head, okay? I'm hearing I'm a badass dude and I'm just a little baby. Good evening, good evening. It's time to start a vlog. Yeah, I have no words for myself. So, you may have read the title of the video, so you know what's about to happen. I'm about to read this book. Is the hype real? Is it good? Is it bad? I keep hearing all the answers. Like, it's so, so good, it's terrible, I'm going to DNF it, it's cringy, it's, I, d I don't know, uh, I honestly don't know, but everybody's reading it, everybody's talking about it, and now I need to form my own opinions on it, because it's everywhere, it's bloody everywhere, okay? And I caved. I caved and, well, it took some time to actually find the book, um, because it's hard to find. <laughs> um, but here it is, and it's a chunky boy. I don't have the, like, pretty spread edges that everybody else seems to have, but, yeah, it's a chunky boy. Um, that's what she said. It's a big boy. Yeah, let's, let's just get into it, shall we? So... What is this book about? I don't know. Something about dragons and dragon riders, but also not and some girl. I don't know. Is she going to save the world? I don't know. Um, Brutal Games, Grumpy Dragons. Grumpy Dragons? All right. Sizzling Sexual Tension. That was Jennifer Alarm and Trout. Okay. So... There's going to be some spice in it, I'm guessing then. Cool. Ooh. There's a map. I'm going to take that off because I can't read with that. But, ew. There's a map in here. Is there something in there? Oh, it's the same map. That's boring. So, yeah. I'm going to get stuck to stuck to tool. I'm going to start reading this book. And I'll update you when I have something to update about. That's how vlogs work, right? Right? I don't know. I don't have an update on the book. Uh, I just wanted to say I have some cheese, or some brie, and some grapes. That's all. I don't know where to put you right now. But I wanted to ooh, I wanted to do a little update for fourth wing wow that didn't take me long to forget what the book was called <laughs> so I'm um I'm just about to start chapter 10 so I've read uh, 114 pages so <laughs> I mean a lot has happened, but also not a lot has happened. There's... So, Violet, she has basically been made by her mother to go into the, the rider's quadrant. I think that's the word they use. Uh, to become a rider rather than a scribe, which was what she was aiming to do, which she had been like training to do. And it m made a lot of sense for her to be a scribe as well because apparently she's like brittle. She has like brittle bones and stuff. And I'm like, why has this mother who's, he, she's like the general, like top boss. So I'm like, why are you making your daughter do this thing? When she's basically like, you look at her and she breaks. It doesn't make any sense. And you haven't like, we haven't like gotten any information about that. Basically, basically what we're told is that 
the the general her mum has said like if you go to the scribe part i will literally drag you over to the riders quadrant the area uh <laughs> but then she has her friend what's his name dane um she has a friend like her childhood friend friend who's a year older than her so he's a second year while she's being a first year he's been trying to like get her over to the scribe part and she's been like no i'm not gonna do it i'm like why he's like literally made everything work so she can just walk on over and like the leaders and like the scribe part they won't tell her mum before for, like it's too late for her to drag her back over to the writer's side I'm like I need to know and I hope we find out because otherwise I'm gonna be pissed off AF because I'm already kind of pissed about it I want this information okay it doesn't make any sense for her to be a writer except for like her mum is like top writer boss and her sister, her older sister is a rider and she's apparently doing very well and she had an older brother who died and he was also a rider and it's like, yeah, uh, I, I mean, yes, everyone in your family is one but it doesn't mean you have to be one, you can go your own way. Also, her dad was a scribe when he was alive, he died too some time ago. Um, so it's not like she doesn't have scribe blood in her veins, if you want to call it that. I think that's what I have for now. I mean, I'm kind of liking it. Um, I can definitely see where if you're very well read, like you've read so many books that's basically the same, I can see where you kind of will go like, mm, do we need another YA kind of book? Because uh, some people are like that. <laughs> that was kind of mean to me but so far i haven't like encountered anything that i feel is very cringeworthy though there's been like some moments of um weird giggles whatever they're <laughs> snort giggles where you go <laughs> <laughs> there's one moment and i don't remember what mum and that was that's great so there's oh that's another thing though so her mum like being the general she like there was a revolution well there was some uprising going on and um like basically her mum killed off being like in charge um she like had people executed and all the children of these people um they were forcibly conscripted to be riders um because more or less you don't actually not a lot of people live through the whole training process so it was probably a setup um <laughs> So there's a lot of kids that's like had family members killed off like by orders of her, Violet's mum and now they want her dead because apparently that's how things work. You take out things on other people. It's like a vicious cycle in the end. Um, but like the main dude, which I'm guessing is going to be her main love interest because it's just that kind of deal isn't it yeah he's uh i i think sh he has a thing for her as well it's not very subtle i don't remember if there was anything else my brain is tired but i do want to continue reading this book and see where i mean i haven't really made much of a dent wow it's a chunky boy apparently it's fine I'm enjoying myself. I shall check back with you later and hopefully I will remember what I wanted to say before I pick up the camera. Who knows? Who knows? It's me we're talking about. It's me. I'm all over the place, let's be honest. Also, we're going a bit wingly 
because my arm is getting tight even though my arm is resting on my leg like see my arm is resting on my leg uh and yeah this is just where am i going i don't know i'm going to bed that's where i'm going okay i'll catch you later bye i can't see a bloody thing <laughs> Oh, no, nope, still can't see anything. Anyway, I'm probably here. We'll notice when I'm editing. Um, fourth wing. I've uh, made it to, I'm going to start chapter 20. So, what's happened since the last update? Well, not a whole lot and also like maybe a big thing <laughs> uh, so what's her name again i keep forgetting violet violet yeah um she has made it through i don't know the pre-training process and she has bonded with a dragon well, she's bonded with two dragons. Because, you know, main character, special. Um, so, there's this whole thing where they, they sort of like walk through as a line through, I don't know, where the dragons are just standing around watching them, like trying to decide which human they want to bond with. Cause it's the dragons that decide, it's not the humans. <laughs> it's very important. Um, and then, and like, at the end of the line, there's this little golden thing. And some of the dudes, and I guess some of the girls as well, are, are like, well, that thing needs to be put down because it's too small to carry a ride and yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. Uh, so basically, when it comes to the actual event where they just enter this i guess massive arena kind of a deal uh where they're just gonna walk around and find their dragon basically um violet overhears three guys going like with like on their mission to kill this little golden dragon because it's not really go yellow, it's not really orange, it's not even a proper colour. Gold is a proper colour, don't be an idiot. Anyway, she gets to the dragon before them and is like, go away, run away, they're gonna kill you. Bull. <laughs> and then she basically, she, she protects the dragon from them. And so, during that whole thing, the big massive dragon that like hasn't been seen in like the last five years arrives. <laughs> of course it does. And during that whole process, um, so she doesn't really find out she's tethered to both dragons until like when she's gone to the I don't know, council thingy, and like, this is my name, and this is my dragon's name. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the tiny dragon goes like, and... What's it called? Andara? Andarna? I don't know, I can't, can't remember these names. <laughs> and she's like, excuse me, what now? Um... Yeah, so she's tethered to, like, the smallest dragon and the biggest dragon. The biggest dragon who has loads of experience from before. Um, I kind of like it, though, because when... So, the dragon and the rider of the dragon, they can communicate, so... <laughs> when the big dragon is, like, talking to her, I'm, like, picturing this, like... Oh, massive voice that's like, oh, I'm a big badass dude. And then when the, the tiny dragon comes, it's like, I'm just a little baby. 
<laughs> That's just the voices I'm hearing in my head, okay? I mean, I guess I could go look it up on the audiobook. I may do that after, because I know it's available, I think. I'm pretty sure it's available, so I could actually go look it up later. Maybe I'll do that after I finish the book. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll do that. Just for kicks and giggles. I want to know how they did the dragon voices. <laughs> Cause that's what I'm hearing in my head, okay? I'm hearing I'm a badass dude and I'm just a little baby. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically what's happened in the last 10 chapters. Dragons. The, they have dragons now. <laughs> so far, I've still not accounted any, like, really cringy parts. So I'm I'm still waiting for that. I mean, it may there may have been some cringy parts in the 19 chapters that I've read, but not enough for me to go Ugh. or even notice it. Apparently, because honestly, so far I'm just enjoying it. It's not the best book ever written, of course not. I don't think I've read the best book ever written yet, but it's enjoyable. It's an adventure. <laughs> uh, it has some snappy lines, I guess. Right now I'm just really enjoying the dragon voices I have in my head. Uh, <laughs> it's making me laugh. Maybe that's the cringe part. I don't know. But I, I think, I, I mean, I have like half the book left, so halfway through point. Mm. Anyway, see you later. I'll go read some more chapters. Well, I, I'm going to have some breakfast first because I, I just woke up, but I'll read some more chapters later. I mean, I think I have to go work first, but... What has happened since I last checked in? I'm now... Um, about to start chapter 30. Let's put that back in. <laughs> so, I think I've been like checking in every 10 chapters or so. I think that's about it. I think I've checked, yep. Yeah. Anyway, the, you'll, you'll have noticed by now. And in those 10 chapters, like each 10 chapter, segment part I don't know what to call it um not a lot seems to happen but also a lot seems to happen does that make sense so it's not like it's it's just boring nonsense until like the next big thing shows up but not also also not a lot actually happens if you think about it I mean it does and it doesn't Oh my god, I'm confusing myself. Anyway, so what have we what have we seen since the last update? So Violet has been training like crazy. She's like trying to build up muscle mass and you know everything like that because she cannot stay on her dragon. However, by the end of um the ten chapters I just read, uh there's this like what is it? A war battle? Something like that. I mean, it's it's not actual war. It's the different um, wings, yeah, um, that have this like end of the year war battle thingy. S Satan? Is that how you say his name? Sandin. X. Um. <laughs> hang on. Let me read it. Say, I want to say Satan. X A D E N. I don't know him. Um, so he and um, Violet's dragon. I want to say Tan. Tan Tananash. Ah, ah. I can't say these names. Anyway, they um, constructed a saddle for. Uh, Violet's dragon to wear so that she could strap herself in without um, t 
Tan, whatever his name is, um, having to use his power to hold her in because every time he uses his power to like strap her in, he's like using up too much of the power and making them weaker. Something along the lines. And um, yeah, so he did that. So they now have a saddle. Which, why didn't, why doesn't all the riders have saddles? That's my question. Seems easier to just put a saddle on the dragon than trying to hold yourself there with your legs. Just saying. Just saying. Anyway. Um, what else? Yeah, so she's been like practicing and training. She basically has no free time at all. Um, I mean, do you want free time? Do you want a lot of free time when you're like in a war academy? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Basically, my free time would be spent sleeping, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so not a lot happened there between that, but during that, like, so everyone's been like, um, what's it called? Channeling? So everyone's been starting to, like, channel their dragon's power, being able to, first you, like, are able to do, like, just simple tasks, like, you can use this special pen which doesn't require ink or whatever I don't know you can open doors and I think the moving things like some things is like a general kind of a deal and not just the special kind of power that your dragon will like challenge challenge <laughs> channel to you and the way you transmit it I don't know how to explain that honestly it's explained in the book. If you read the book, it's gonna show up. Anyway. Um. <laughs> so great. I'm great at this. I'm super good at this. Anyway, so yeah, it took quite some time for her to get that bit. And then all of a sudden, um, uh, her, her dragons, because she has two, uh, they were like, she's ready. <laughs> and then... Fucking hell. Um, so they just, well, yeah, both of them, I suppose. They, like, start funneling in. Um, and when she gets that hit, she also gets Tan's, like, lust for his dragon mate. What's that? I can't say the names, but the dragon that is um, chosen by... Satan, so you know they're all connected <laughs> um and you know they get like heated feelings and stuff and she gets like all of that in one go and she's like whoa baby <laughs> she almost jumps her friend Liam um who's kind of her bodyguard in a way <laughs> and she's like no I can't do that I'm gonna regret it and then she just goes running into Satan, of course, of course, and um, he kind of teaches her how to like ground yourself so you can like tune out your dragon's thoughts and whatnot and feelings in this case. Um, and then they have a little heated makeout sesh. That's it, that's it, that's that's all we get from then. And then he's like, No, I cannot do this very dramatic and it's like you have to go because I cannot go and leave you here because you will be vulnerable not actually in that way but it will be funny that's just my bad dramatic attitude my mum came over I don't remember where I left off something I think I was on the oh yeah yeah they had the 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 heated moment kiss and um, my bad acting. <laughs> my very good bad acting. 
So that happened. And Violet's just like going through trying to um, basically waiting for her powers to manifest, I suppose. Because if they don't, apparently uh, she, it can get like too much. Uh, it's like the dragons are channeling too much power and the humans just go poof because they don't have an outlet. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm so good at explaining things. Don't you get it? Don't you get it at all? Um, basically that. So, speed forward, we're at the war battle and... Uh, one of the, uh, well, her enemies, I guess, Jack, the asshole that's been trying to kill her since, like, day one. <laughs> I mean, probably before then, what do I know? Um, <laughs> I mean, he probably had dreams about killing people, what do I know? He seems to be the type that was just like, I'm gonna go to War Academy because I can kill people and no one will blame me for it because it's allowed. <laughs> anyway, so he's trying to kill um, Violent's friend Liam, her bodyguard. Um, and he, well, he stabs Liam. He like jumps on his dragon, stabs Liam, and Liam goes like down. He goes falling down. And so, and everybody's like too far away. And like, Violet is flying with Tan? Turn? I don't know. Her, her dragon, her big, big badass dragon. And she's like, and Jara, and whatever the golden dragon's name is she has that power to stop time from that dragon it's like i need to use this power right now and golden dragon is like go for it because it's a she right yeah she's safe so she's fine she will probably go to sleep for like a week or so but that's fine that's fine <laughs> i can't keep my hair straight and so she kind of stops time for everyone else but for her and um, big ass badass dragon and they go like flying fast i mean the dragon is fast in itself like from from the get go um but they go like fast time stops they get to him catch him catch liam and then violet kind of gets like her power kind of comes out she can control lightning apparently she's thinking it's like oh it's that backflash black flash whatever um that's like she's about to die because her power has hasn't come out yet no no it's her power coming out and she goes like boom lightning strikes takes down a tower where I don't think Jack was in the tower, but he was like close to the tower, so the tower goes down over him, kills him, yay, because we don't like him. He's, he's a big ass. <laughs> it was like, well, saying that though, I mean, we've been waiting for him to like be killed by someone, but saying that though, being the big ass that he is, he probably survived being crushed by a tower I mean, if it happens, I said it. <laughs> Please don't let it be. I really hate that character. Um, there's enough assholes around. I'm sure there's gonna become become some some more assholes are gonna come in. So we don't need him. Um, yeah, she controls lightning. Ha! Ah. And then Satan's like, "Well, I thought so." <laughs> it's like, excuse me, how? Did you know Violet was going to control lightning? That lightning was going to be her power? I want to know this. Is it like, so he's like shadow. So is that like kind of the opposite shadows and lightning? I don't know. It doesn't feel like the opposite, but what the hell do I know? I'm so confused. <laughs> there was something else. Oh yeah. So the very last bit of... What chapter am I on? 
Hang on. Uh, I was okay. So the last bit of chapter twenty nine, because I'm starting chapter thirty, is like he's like. So Violet is feeling bad because she killed Jack. It's her first kill. She's like she's not a killer. Okay. She's like feeling bad because this Jack is dead, and she's like responsible for it. And then Satan comes in her room when she's like, I guess practicing throwing her knives. I don't know. And he's like, damn, that's so hot. Anyway, that's the side point. <laughs> but he tells her to like, if you need to scream, scream at me. If you need to hit someone, hit me. I can take it. What she do? She kisses him. So I'm guessing going into chapter 30, it's the spicy, spicy scene. If not, because, I mean... It's not a lot left of the book. I'm expecting this spicy, spicy scene everyone's talking about. I don't know what's happening in it. I've just heard this is a very spicy scene. Although I've heard it's very cringy in the beginning, and I'm still wondering about that. So I think I need to like, I don't know what I need to do, but so far I haven't felt the cringe. So maybe I just really like these types of books and it's not cringy for me. I don't know. We'll shall see. I have, I don't know how many pages that is, but I have that many pages left. Um, I will probably read that and come back when the book is finished. That seems, that seems logical. Anyway, see you later. Boop. You guys, I'm so upset. I'm so upset. So. Liam's dead. He did not deserve to die. It's very upsetting, okay? He was just such a good guy. Of course he would die because he was too good. So, this book, it kills either the best or the worst sometimes not even the worst sometimes it's just like on the verge of the verse the worst the worst i'm so upset so upset also i fucking hate dane i mean i kind of knew it so like throughout the book he's like he I mean, he's trying to, first of all, he's trying to get her to change Quadrant. And it's like, what? Well, you're supposedly her best friend and you don't have any belief in her that she could make it. I mean, she does make it, obviously, throughout the book. But it's like, you grew up with her and you have no belief that she will make it. That she's not clever enough to figure things out. Even though she's not maybe strong enough. She can get strong enough. I mean he violates her in a way that's so upsetting. First off. If you're looking for the spicy stuff. It's in chapter 30 and 32. You're welcome. So. They do the deed multiple multiple times they even blow out a window well she blows out a window with her lightning power because it's that fantastic <laughs> apparently oh when you have too much power and it goes boom she happens she happens anyway so they're like in the middle of things, like going at it. And Garrick, Garrick, I think it was Garrick. He comes like banging on doors, like, uh, and saying, "Is like, go away, because <laughs> he, uh, he's busy, okay." And Garrick's like, "I wish I could, but people are dead." And so they get dressed, they go out, and apparently it turns out. It's war game time. It's like the the thing. So people aren't dead. People are dead. Who the hell knows? 
they keep like lying to us that the, the heads people anyway or lying by omission whichever you want to go with the head of everyone the people in charge fucking sucks okay fucking sucks so they go out and it's like okay it's war game time fine so they start like forming information and going off and Dane's Dane saying is like well I'm I need to have Violet with me because of scale and tan is I, I can't say their names but the dragons because of their mason bonds and they're gonna be away for like five days and that bond is not gonna anyway um, so she goes and he takes a bunch of other marked kids um, turns out the war games aren't real well they are but they're not basically they get to this outpost and it's like you they they find this message basically like well you can save this city or you can go on off to the next post um, and join us it's basically a loyalty game Fucking hell, and this is where Liam dies because he's a fucking hero. I'm so upset, all the bad words coming out, all the swear words. I'm so upset. There's this whole thing where so Satan and his, I guess, group of marked ones, if you want to call that, they, they've been like, um smuggling out weapons to kill these wyvern vi wyverns wyverns what way the things in the fables that are apparently exist and it's like fucking hell and Violet gets upset because he's not told her everything yeah I mean I get it I mean I would be upset too because she goes into this new relationship which started like a day ago technically when they made themselves official to each other more or less um so he's been holding the secret from her and she's like well i went into this open-hearted and i just gave myself to you and you not trust me enough to share I feel like she's overreacting in a way because the things he didn't share are things that could get not only them killed but so many others. So when the uprising, rebellion, when um, Satan's dad and all those other people rebelled is what they're calling it, whatever, when they did that and then the people in charge kill them off they marked all these kids Satan took on the responsibility of a hundred and seven kids so basically if they do wrong he's to blame and I'm like dude he took on the responsibility of them so they would have a chance to live to at least try to live by going through um, the riders quadrant and fighting their way instead of just being killed so they at least get that chance so he's apparently to I don't want to say blame or that but he made that bargain to give these kids a chance to live at least for longer because <laughs> they were set to die as well the way these people just kill people off wow wow yeah so i kind of think she's overreacting a bit but i get it um i do hope that like in the next book she can kind of not come to her senses but almost because they need to fix their relationship. I hope that he does everything he says he's gonna do and like try to earn it back because that's what he says. He says in the end that um, he's gonna do everything to earn that trust back because she loves him. Yeah, she loves him. 
Yeah, Munchkin. Yeah. So, <laughs> with, with Winston's tail in the way, overall thoughts. So, I'm going to put this back. Munchkin, are you sitting on me? What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Hi. <laughs> you don't think it's easy for me, babe. <laughs> oh my god. Overall thoughts. Are you, are you joining me, Bobby? No, you're leaving. Okay. Overall thoughts. So, we don't find out why Violet's mum made her make the writer's quadrant choice. And if we do, it was so minuscule that my brain did not register it so i want an explanation i want like pages of explanation because if we could get pages of explanation of other things we can get pages of explanation of that also the fact that violet is apparently she's like frail and stuff so it's like why is this bitch of a mum making her do the most dangerous thing ever why why so i'm upset about that i need answers give me answers give me answers now <laughs> i mean i'm not as upset at a, a fuck. right where was i my mum barged in <laughs> here's the thing with her when she um, comes into my flat, she just comes in and just talks nonsense. So even if I could film, I wouldn't be able to film. <laughs> if that makes sense. Anyway, um, oh, she moved it so far away. Okay. Yes. I mentioned the mum thing. I did. I'm pretty sure I did otherwise editing me is gonna have to jump in and have a chat um could be a first time first time for everything what else Rebecca Yaros if that's how you say her name she is very good at the um the cliffhanger chapter endings because every chapter ending was like what the fuck, I need to read the next chapter because I cannot end on this note. Holds true for the end of the book as well because I need answers. <laughs> I need answers and I need answers now. Good thing the second book comes out in like a couple of months or something. So that's good. Hopefully it's a duology and I don't have to wait for the th for a third book because that's gonna kill me That's the same as if the book number two is the same as this one. So thoughts I'm gonna have to go and Like go back and see about the cringe moments like I have to go see go watch other people's vlogs about the cringe Because I don't get it. I don't get what's so cringy so I need to go and watch other people's vlogs again I guess that's what I'm doing at work today don't tell anyone it's the early mornings you saw me just woken up before I'm a little bit clear head now so yeah that's what I'm doing at work today I'm going <laughs> to watch people's fourth wing vlogs or summarization or whatever um the spoiler free versions maybe i'm gonna watch some spoiler versions as well i'm gonna be binging fourth wing content because i need to know because i don't remember i only vaguely remember people saying it's cringe i can't read it the end there's a dog on the field there's a giant dog on the field Oh, there's some 
person going around with two dogs, one in a leash and one... Why are you going into the deer hunt thingy? Don't knock up the deers. The deers live there. Bambi needs a home too. Wow, distraction. Anyway, I need to go look into the cringe. I might even like check out some uh, Goodreads reviews or what whatnot. So I think this is not the end of this vlog. The cats are going mad. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to like um do a bit of research basically. I'm gonna have to watch people's videos. And I'm gonna do go read Goodreads reviews and whatnot because I need to know now. Cause I did not find it cringe. I was looking for cringe, okay? And I did not get cringe. So I'm and now I need to know. I'm very upset about this. I'm not, but it, it, I'm apparently very passionate about having been lied to. I feel like I've been lied to. Um Basically, that was, I think that's what I said in the beginning. Like, I know it's cringe, and I know there's some spiciness. I'm pretty sure that's two of the things I said. And that there's dragons. The dragons are badass, honestly. I need more dragons in my life. So yeah, I really like this book. Um, I really enjoyed, because it's, it's all just straightforward. Pretty much. There's some bits and pieces of like information I would like to know. But that's a possibility for book number two to give me. Because this could just be laying the land. And then in book two I could be getting like the secret information I'm craving now. Because there's loads of stuff. Not just like why her mum forced her into the writer's thingy, um, but like what is the like top people going on about? What's the king and the yeah, because this is king, he seemed very weird. We meet the king at one point, and he's like some weird dude. I'm 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 confused about him anyway, yeah. I need to know what all these like government people are doing and why they have been hiding because basically I think they say it's like 600 years ago or so that um, humans and dragons like joined forces um, but then at one point it's like the history just goes back like 400 years and I'm like well, you have 200 years missing then. But at some point, but someone says this. It's like, it only takes one generation to, ch to change the narrative. Jeez, Kasuga, mad. Uh, to change the narrative. And then, like, everything, everyone else after that is just gonna believe what's, what's said. Because it's in the books. So, basically... I need more answers. <laughs> I need more answers, okay? I need more. So I'm gonna go watch a bunch of videos. Well, I'm gonna listen to a bunch of videos because I need to do work, but I can listen to other things um, sometimes. This dog on the field is mad. Is everyone going mad today? <sighs> I think that's the first time I've seen a dog in a field. I usually see, um, like, the tractor thing that goes back and forth when it's farming season. Uh, and every now and again I will see some deers. Which I've seen a lot more of, like, in the last couple of weeks than, like, in all the years I've lived here. Mad. Madness. Anyway, um... Um, I'll, I'll see you later because obviously there's more work to be done with this vlog. Yeah, I'll check back. I'll I'll see you later. Right. 
So since I last checked in, I have watched a bunch of vlogs or videos um, containing Fort Wing. Yeah. I have also listened to the audiobook. Yeah. I I finished a book physically and then I listened to the whole audiobook. I said I was gonna like check out the um how the dragon sounded <laughs> on the audiobook. Um uh, I, I well I can tell you they sounded very much like I imagined them in my head while I was reading it. So there we go. Also, one thing with the audiobook. So, I I can't really pronounce any names whatsoever. Can I find a little... Ah, here we go. So, Satan's dragon is named S-G-A-E-Y-L. Now, I've heard people say scale which kind of kind of makes sense on the audiobook it's segale so i'm wondering what's the correct one because i can't he make heads or tails of it honestly but you would think that with the audiobook it would be like more the official way of pronouncing things so I would hope that's the correct one, but it doesn't make any sense in my head. So, there you go. Um, so, I kind of, like, answered some of my own questions, as it were. So, there's no real reason behind the general or Violet's mum, same person, saying that Violet needs to go into the rider school thing. Except that she said so. I need more information. Thank you. I think that's the only thing I managed to clear up um, from listening to it. Moving on to other people's videos. So there was a very big mix. It was kind of 50-50 on either loving it or like hating it. Well, 50-50 is wrong kind of because there was like a middle thing where people were just eh, I liked some I didn't like some parts which fair enough fair enough so I took some notes because you know that can happen so lack of world building is one of the reasons why people don't like it and yes, I can agree, there's a lack of world building in this book. And another thing was like info dumpy. And yes, so Violet tends to, like when she's nervous, she tends to like spout information. And not just random information, no, no, world building information kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> Which... The first time she does it is when she's walking over this, um, what's it called? The parapet. Um, which is right in the beginning. <laughs> and when I read it, I was like, why are you giving me all this, uh, so much information in one go? Um, I'm not going to contain this information. No, I did not contain that information. I didn't even contain that information when I listened to it the like the second time around going through the book, which was just yeah. Another thing was that the characters, especially the side characters, they're not really flushed out. They're more like, well, here's the goofy best friend. Here's the very protective best friend i don't know um i don't know well they're, they're very much like they're given a like general mission in life what kind of friend they're going to be and that's how they're explained and that's that's about it and yes 
Um, I would also like to have more information and have more flushed out characters, but it didn't bother me. It, it honestly didn't bother me that much. Um, not enough to like, haven't said much about it earlier. So I didn't really care about that, that part. One thing also, which I think I mentioned, I don't know, um, I definitely thought about it anyway, it's that so many people, so many kids really, go into this writer's quadrant thing and they're supposed to become like the ultimate, uh, not hero, but soldier thing. And the thing is they need more like soldiers out on the field but instead of like well you may not be fit for like the front line but you can do like other things around town um instead of like <laughs> sulling out who's like the strongest and the weakest that way they're, they're like killing people so they're literally like getting rid of like it's like one fourth of the people that goes in actually makes it back out so you would think that they would have found a better way because they obviously need soldiers to fight this war which by the way I'm gonna get to later but they need soldiers so why are they killing the soldiers soldiers before coming becoming soldiers it's a good question. Not enough for me to like, ugh, bad book. But it's a good question. Also, I kept thinking about who is making the food? Where are the farmers? Because <laughs> there's no mention. Because it basically what we get is like, there's four different ways you can go. You go into this like school and there's four different sections you can go off to. And none of them is like farming. So it kind of seemed like everyone would have to go into this school. You'd become a writer, a healer, scribe, and whatever the fourth thing is. Um, where are the farmers? Where are the farmers at? Because there's got to be some farmers around here or else you're not eating. <laughs> that was a very bad accent, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I kept thinking about farmers, but I did. Maybe it's because they're farming the fields out in front of my house, so I kept thinking about farming. <laughs> but also, not really enough for me to consider it bad. I didn't really care about it, but it's a question. It's a, it's a valid question. And another thing, <laughs> I'm just mentioning things people thought were bad. The pacing. The pacing is weird. Yes, I agree. Um, so basically, like, one day it's Monday, but then next day it's, like, Wednesday, four weeks from the first day. So it's, it's, ugh, the pacing is a bit weird. <laughs> this is true. And also a lot of things happening, like, off screen. So I think our brains, having read a lot of books previously, makes us like kind of fill in the gaps but yeah the pacing is weird true 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 also not enough for me to hate it because the pacing is weird but the pacing makes it go makes it reads faster so you win some you lose some uh or, and one thing someone mentioned was that they can read longer than just the beginning because of the weird dick jokes. <laughs> so basically, um, Violet's sister Mira gives Violet this like dragon scale vest kind of a deal to keep her safe. And I mean, dragon scales are huge. Uh, so, <laughs> so Mira's like, well, I know someone who can make things a lot smaller, and so that's what's happened. Uh, and then she says something like, um, they can also make things much, much bigger. And Viola's like, how much bigger? <laughs> yeah, dick jokes. 
true. Uh, I would also, if that person had continued on reading, I'm sure they would have also said something about the objectification of Satan, because Satan is very objectified, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really care about that. So, <laughs> my favourite, like, movies growing up were those, like, dude jokes, dude movies. <laughs> it sounds so weird, but, like, boy joy. B -b boy joy. Boy jokes. Those are kind of my thing. Well, not my thing, but I really enjoyed it for some reason. So, maybe I didn't really think too much about that either. It didn't make me cringe, which is did for a lot of people. It didn't make me cringe. And I mean it takes it doesn't take a lot for me to cringe, but also it kind of takes a lot. I didn't mind it because it's not like on every page which can be truthful. Had it been a man written this book and the main character was a man and uh, he was looking at, like, the ladies. If Satan was a woman <laughs> and Viola was a man, that would have been kind of off-putting. I'm not going to lie. Because um, then it probably would have been on, like, every other page. Which, I mean, Viola kind of objectifies Satan a lot. Um, like, damn, he's so hot. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't care. I honestly didn't care. Uh, and who doesn't like a good dick joke every now and again? <laughs> Obviously I was in that kind of mood, so there we go. So, with the pacing as well, because the pacing is so weird, and also the characters not being completely flushed out, we have like Violet and Satan. They go from like, well, he hates me, he's gonna kill me, to like, I love you. Um, and it goes, it's like from one day to the next. It's literally one day to the next and it's like, ah, yeah, I don't think you're in love, I think you're in lust. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're thirsty. Thirsty for some Satan. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, uh, also with the pacing and stuff, because it's so weirdly paced and we have, like, things happening off-screen, as it were, because it's, like, Fourth Wing is basically every popular YA book, YA fantasy book, merged into one and added dragons, because not a lot of them have dragons. Well... Some of them have, but very little. It's not like the main thing, which dragon is kind of the main thing. The main animal. <laughs> we don't see the dragons early on, but we do hear about them some. Because um, the whole thing is becoming riders, dragon riders. So, yeah, dragon is the main thing. I mean, the Roma, it's a... It's a What's it called? Roman Romanticy? Yeah, it's a, it's a romance book with some fantasy elements, basically, that's what it is. I mean, a lot of these things, because I went into this book expecting it to be a bit cringe and it would have some spicy elements to it. I did expect it to have more spice elements to it than it did. Um, it did not. Um, it had just enough for me to not go, ugh. Also, the description of the sex scenes, as it were, they weren't... <laughs> they weren't that bad, honestly. And maybe it's because I very, very recently read a Court of Silver Flames, which <laughs> has some very descriptive <laughs> sex scenes. So maybe this just felt tame compared to that one at least. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so because it's basically all the popular fantasy, YA fantasy book in one, I think if we've read those books, we kind of just peek 
piece we kind of just piece everything together as a word but yes i do agree there's loads of information that's missing in this book but i'm kind of giving it the benefit of a doubt of it being the first book and they're just kind of wanting to throw this out there and that in book two and apparently it's a five book series <laughs> so that's interesting so in book two i'm hoping we'll get more information and stuff um we shall see i mean it's out in i think november or something like that so it's not a long wait and honestly having the first book come out in may and the second book possibly in november if i'm remembering correctly i'm wondering is book number three gonna come out in like may next year because I feel like they're going to throw them out there or we're going to have to wait for them for like five years. Um, so that that should be interesting. That's a different subject <laughs> all together. I'll be right back because my camera is about to die. I think those were like all the things I took note of that people mentioned. <laughs> there was one very rangy video I watched though. Um, and they were like, the, the thing was, they were so ragey about this book and the information, the facts are not correct. <laughs> I mean, it's minor details in the grand scheme of things, but uh, so they, so what, like one thing was like uh, Tan, uh, Violet's Big Black Dragon. Uh, that oh he hasn't been seen in 500 years I thought that was a mistake like they like they exaggerated or something like that was a mistake no they said that a lot um so, so they said they kept saying like he hasn't been seen in 500 years and I'm like no he hasn't been seen in five years um he was <laughs> he was bonded to um, the dude that tried to save Violet's brother while he was dying and that happened five years ago um, Also, the dragon is only like a hundred years old. So Yeah, uh, and then they were like, oh, they, they and uh, Violet can't feel like they, they got stuck on that when the dragons start to like channel their power to Violet that the first thing she's feeling is the dragon lust and that's when that's the go that hot makeout scene with Satan <laughs> uh, and they were like oh but she can't feel anything else it's just the the sexual tension she can't feel when they're they're hungry or sad or so. no she can feel all that she can definitely feel when they're hungry because there is a scene where her tummy is like super rumly and she's like go eat something and yeah so yeah he could yeah, I, I don't mind rage your videos, but please try to keep your facts straight. I mean, I get it in a way because when you're like super ragey and you're passionate about something, you start to just spill out things. Um, and there can be mistakes. Mistakes can be made. That's That's fine. But when it's like said multiple times the same wrong fact is said multiple times it's like did you even read the book <laughs> it gets you wondering it gets you wondering i mean i have definitely raged about some things because you kind of get stuck sometimes when you get like ragey about something you kind of get stuck on that one thing and that's what makes you like super ragey and then everything else goes to shit um so yes i've definitely been there <laughs> but this is not a tiny creator like i am i'm a tiny creator and hardly anyone watches my videos this person has a lot of views <laughs> so you would feel like make sure you have your facts straight i'm just saying i'm just saying um, it's easy to miss things. We should at least try to get our facts straight. So I think for me, 
I, the book as a whole, I mostly enjoyed all of it. It was fast paced, it was funny at times, it was action paced at times. I mean, there's loads of things that I'm like disagreeing about, but it doesn't mean, but not enough for me to hate the book. Yeah, so basically some parts I liked, some parts I didn't like very much, but you can't win them all, you can't win them all. It was a decent enough read. Uh, I, I enjoyed myself. So I feel like hype books in all its glory, you just gotta take everything like with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Or whatever the saying is. Honestly, I can't think of what else I want to say, so I'm gonna end this video here, and while I'm editing, if I'm like jumping in on things, I might do that. I don't know yet. I honestly don't know what kind of clips I have for this video, so this shall be a very interesting um, experience for me. It will probably make me hate doing vlogs, because so many clips. So many clips. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Oh, bye bye.